From what? I mean. Good afternoon, everybody. This is the Hornet Racing Frame and Suspension Team. Here presenting is Joel, Jeff, Nick, Terry, and myself, Blanca. As you, uh, as many of you know, the Society of Automotive Engineers hosts a yearly competition in which it will take place in Lincoln, Nebraska, in just over a month. This year's team uh, objective is to completely redesign the frame and suspension system. Uh, the fall semester, uh, sorry. the fall semester was dedicated to design, and this current semester to building, testing, and refining. The goal for the frame was to maximize stiffness and reduce weight, uh, with a constant emphasis on design for manufacturability. The goal for the suspension was to was to create a reputable system met, that met competition <coughs> specifications. After the completion of the, of the design, um, we were dedicated to, on this current semester, we were then, uh, dedicated to building, testing, and refining. The goal for the, sorry. Uh, at the majority of the spring semester was dedicated to manufacture and assembly. The final weeks of the semester to testing, analysis, refining, and for future uh, Next is Jeff. So here we have the full design of the frame and suspension system put together in SolidWorks. This is the frame as it sits right now, consisting of the front section, the side impact section, and the rear section. This is our full suspension system as it sits in SolidWorks, including the, the spindles, uprights, A-arms, towings, ARVs, rockers, and shots and springs. So, uh, as we came through the manufacturing process, we found there's a few design changes that needed to happen. First of all, the brackets for the A-arms needed to be redesigned due to the fact that they didn't match up with the, the frame. Uh, the seat had to be slightly adjusted due to the fact that we had to order a completely different seat due to lead times on the one we wanted. Uh, the spindle design has been changed a few times throughout the manufacturing process. A carbon fiber firewall has been created instead of using just a standard cheap metal firewall. The engine mount purposes were replaced with uh, just some shim spacers for ease of insulation and removal of the motor. And the wall thickness and OD of the main roll boot has been changed from 1 and 8 to 1 inch OD and from 083 to 095 wall thickness. Uh, tubes for the frame have all been uh, notched for us at an outside source. Uh, we also outsourced two uh, welding facilities to take all the frame together for us. Plasma cutting was done here on campus. The plasma cut out shim spacers for our uprights. Um, and all the project logistics, manufacturing, and procurement of parts were on schedule the whole time. That's going to pass off to Joel. Thanks, Jeff. Okay, now the fun part. When design hits reality. When manufacturing began, everything was going smooth, starting from the front of the car along towards the back of the car, until a certain mishaps, and that was guy right here. That's the main roll boot of the car. And when this lower lateral member was installed into it, it was installed slightly unparalleled with the bottom plane of the car. That consequently created the main roll boot to be connected to the midsection of the car, slightly tilted. And that consequently caused the rear end of the section to be slightly off position as well. Therefore, we had to um, remanufacture the back end. We also found out that the lower two rear members um, were easy to make, but extremely hard to position on the rear part of the frame. And that's because, it might be hard to see right now, but they are off all the major axes. So when you're trying to locate this specific bend right here out in space, it's very hard unless you have really good jigging equipment. Uh, so in a future design, we might um, make that part parallel with the longitudinal axis of the car so it's easy to align. Um, also, we might have mitered this joint instead of bending it. That makes it easier for manufacturing, um, but it's not a best solution. Okay, so now, like I said, we had to, to decide to remanufacture the back end of the car, and we were faced with the option of having a TIG versus MIG, or 
Mike Newton quality of welding and Terry K quality. <laughs> but we chose Terry because we love him. But the trade-off being is that when you go with MIG, you get slightly uneven heat affected zone. Um, it's not as pleasing to the eye and the penetration as it isn't as consistent as it is with TIG. It's, it's very um, deep. Uh, now with putting our brackets onto our uh, frame, we found out that they weren't manufacturing friendly. They were hard to mount onto a round tube. Um, they were not good for repeatability. And also, they didn't provide a good area to weld to. They were just basically plug filled with a bunch of metal rods. So um, it wasn't the best, but in the future of time, you might think of a better bracket. Nick? Um, our design necessitated that we had to treat the arms, and we knew they were going to work or destroy during heat treatment. We, didn't, we just didn't know to what extent. Uh, we outsourced the heat treating for this part of, of the manufacturing process, but when they came back, they had shrunk considerably, so much in fact that they had pulled in, uh, and they no longer met the note points on the frame. So that was uh, another uh, uh, manufacturing challenge that we had to overcome. Um, we discussed several alternatives to fix the problem. Uh, one of which was pre-stressing, or just pulling out the arms, and we decided against that because we were pre-stressing. Uh, okay, so, like I said before, we found that jigging was probably the most important part of our project. Uh, we developed a solution, was, which was to create a precise jig, which is right here, and securely mount that to our fabrication table, and then place the car frame centered upon that. This would ensure that this specific point right here, that's the ball joint point uh, <coughs> part where it connects to the upright that which would hold the tire. But um, this way we can make sure that this is symmetric for, on both sides of the car and also um, it would allow us to land the brackets onto the frame accordingly. Whereas the other way would be to trust SolidWorks, which is not a good idea, and put the brackets where they're supposed to go and then hope that those ball joints <coughs> land perfectly out in space. Uh, so, some of the manufacturing improvements, as Joel alluded throughout the presentation, is actually a jig. Um, that would um, greatly increase the actual ability to build the frame in a quick manner. Um, we did have the solution of once we cut off of the rear frame, we did put in a new lateral member on the bottom to follow the uh, new planner structure that we could take our measurements backwards off of. Um, so, that was pretty much it. Uh, um, so, Oh, so the ARM jigs would for sure help with that, and then also um, we did do small adjustments throughout. Uh, when you when building a vehicle, it's harder to keep track of all the different systems that you have to integrate with. So as they come through, as you're building it to complete, get a running car, they start popping up, and it's the advantageous if the member's not in there, moving in an eighth of an inch or three sixteenths of an inch or whatever can actually help them clear it out. And as long as it does not have a drastic change of effect on the design, it's better to move that. Allow for the roll to be light. Um, let's see. Uh, I want to talk real quick about suspension manufacturing. For the most part, it went very, very well. Um, it required an extensive amount of CNC manufacturing uh, because a lot of the parts were um, were complex and they were um, tightly tolerant, so they needed to get very, very uh, tightly to eliminate suspension compliance. Um, all of that required uh, extensive planning, so it's not to hold up subsequent processes that were depending on those parts being done to get integrated or, or what have you. Uh, again, we manufactured an A-arm jig that really helped out um, with uh, manufacturing the A-arms quickly, but uh, as I said before, the A-arms changed shape once they were intruded. Uh, another manufacturing success that we had was actually the incorporation of laser cut components. Uh, laser cut components are extremely accurate, and uh, what we did is we, we, we designed parts to be able to fit together or bend, and then uh, we could weld them or heat treat them, and uh, the parts are extremely rigid, and they weigh ounces each, so one of the overbuilt components on the cars. So that was definitely a success. Um, and overall, the suspension is <coughs> at its weight target. It's currently at 150 pounds. It'll probably be around 120 pounds once we integrate the anti roll system. Uh, so we'll have to reweigh it. Um, but as with any other um, major project, we did find challenges uh, with the suspension system. Uh, the biggest one, in fact, was coordinating all the different vendors uh, for all the different pieces we needed for the suspension. Um, and we had to 
out sort of some big parts, of it, one of which were the wheels. And we were disappointed with some of the parts we got back. Um, when we initially talked to the wheel manufacturers, they told us they would be six and a half pounds each, and they turned, or when they came back, they were over eight and a half pounds. So we weren't very happy with that. Um, uh, and uh, we did have some issues manufacturing some of the CNC components, uh, one of which were the hubs. Um, they weren't fixtured properly. Uh, we actually had to remake them twice, and uh, we'll be attempting to make them a third time. Um, but uh, getting everything fixtured uh, in the CNC, it, we found this crucial <coughs> fitting uh, the way it was intended. All right, so uh, we were uh, able, to, even though it set back out and recreate uh, the rear frame and everything by a mid semester. Uh, we did, and we were able to run a test last night. The primary test that we ran was a torsion test. As the torsion rigidity of the frame is the most important, it keeps the rates in which the front and the rear suspension can work in unison together. The more rigid that central spring is, the better your suspension can perform from what you predicted, which was one of our primary concerns. Next. Uh, this was our testing apparatus. As you can see, uh, this is our final project, our final thing. Uh, it consisted of four major components. We used a jack screw that actually caused a displacement we used load cells to measure the corresponding corner weights across the dial <coughs> indicators to use the displacement of the frames, which from that we were able to calculate the actual angle of deflection along the frame and also the torque that was caused upon it. Um, and we also used... Yeah, yeah, um, sorry. Uh, this is our FDA study, just to give you guys an idea of what, it, what our original one was. Um, we fixtured the rear, and then we actually caused a closing moment. Our predictions with the engine and the lower member inside the main roll hoop was an 1,100 foot-pounds per degree. Um, go to our next one. Um, our actual test came out. We were going to do intermittent tests because we did the change with the actual firewall and the um, through our testing last semester, the importance of the motor, we wanted to actually start with a bare frame and work our way up. Um, so with that, we did sit with the bare frame, and we actually are at 350 foot-pounds per degree. So we did have that from an FAA study from last semester. Um, it was 750 foot-pounds per degree in last semester. Um, so our actual, so it's a drastic difference. Um, with that, um, our actual theoretical weight, though, um, is actually pretty good. It's 65 pounds with brackets, what SolidWorks told us. Even with the weld wire and all that for the suspension brackets, we came in at 67 pounds when we put it on the scale, um, which met our uh, performance difference from last year, what we're trying to do. Our percent difference, as mentioned earlier, uh, is 46% of what it was. So, um, we did make, uh, identify some potential sources of error in our testing apparatus, um, one of which was any accuracy of our scales. We were trying to measure uh, differences, um, plus or minus. Well, the scales are only accurate to plus or minus half a pound, and we were taking data points in increments of two and a half pounds, so uh, that could cause a, a huge potential error. Uh, uh, another potential source of error that we identified is basically the frame wasn't rigidly fixed to the load cells. Uh, we actually put it on camber plates and put them on the load cells, and the car may have shifted each time we unloaded it. Uh, and reloaded it. Um, and again, we, we had to uh, tear the load cells each time we unloaded it, so this may have caused a gradual drift in um, basically the zero point of the scales. Uh, and we also identified uh, one other small potential, uh, <coughs> small source of error, and that was the slipping of the dial indicators on the pickup points. Uh, again, these are the, uh, this is the scale, it's only accurate. And uh, you can see the camera plate that only has one point of contact with the scale. Um, also, of note is the diameter. <laughs> so, how are we going to improve these results? Uh, we are a part of the solution design series, as mentioned later, and we'll about to be going to comp and actually discussing it with industry professionals. One is for sure we're going to rerun the FBA studies with the current design to verify the numbers to see if they didn't need it. Uh, we went off of intuition um, that we are going to need it because of the upper side impact structures to increase that full entire wall. Um, we ran out of time in order to run it. Um, also, we're going to do and measure intermittent uh, displacements along the frame. We'll compare this to the new FBA studies, and we actually can see if it's going to be predictable along the FBA study or not. And if that, then we'll know that we are correct on it. This, or as 
culprit or if it's a setup and how we can improve upon that. Um, and then also the goal is to, A, we're either going to clamp the camera plates to a fixture and put them on it, or we're going to uh, mount the camera plates to the spindle, which will allow the camera plates to sit flat on the scale and hopefully get us a little better reading on that. So finally, we'd like to say thank you to all of our sponsors, um, also to the Hornet Racing team. Um, we had volunteers from them come and make part for us. We've had everyone. Um, without these guys, we wouldn't have been able to do our project. We are a highly capital invested project. Um, it takes a lot of money to do it, and we just, these guys are awesome. So remember their names, please. And all so, faculty and staff, thank yes. you very much. Yes. Much appreciated. Yes. All the criticism as well. Yes, for keeping us on air. <laughs> so, any questions? Um, what we did was, is when we brought the frame back to actually mount the suspension up the first time, what we did is we leveled the, the in the front frame, it's made out of square tubing. And what we did is we knew that that was planar, because that was the first part that was built. We put a level on that and we leveled that out. As we followed it back to the frame, if that was level, it was not possible to actually level the rest of the frame in the rear. So as we went further back, we took different measurements, and that's basically where we found out that that one was put in wrong and caused everything. So, it was through an iterative process of going, well, what's going on here? And we worked our way to town. You mentioned that the role of the material dimensions changed from design to manufacturing level. Uh, that actually was based upon, um, in the state of California, it's really hard to get specific fuel <coughs> in a short amount of time. Um, we, were, we did hit our manufacturing targets as far as making sure we got material here to build over winter break. Um, but what happened was, is because we specified as specific um, OD and ID, uh, they was not available on the west coast within the time in order to send it to the laser notcher down in Southern California and get it up here in time in order to move forward. So we uh, abandoned that idea. Went with the rule stated structure, uh, it came out to pretty much a wash and wait. So. Okay, thank you very much.